Morning, everybody. Good to see you all this fine morning. We'll all get settled down. Uh, we want to welcome everybody this morning. Welcome you whether you're in the in the house here or whether you're online. We want to welcome you. Um, we've got a, an extra special um, service this morning uh, where we've got the dedication of Joshua and Eleanor Gray, which will take place later on. We're really looking for that. We want to welcome everybody here who's a visitor who's come along. Um, so we've got a, a dedication service. So for some of you, uh, this might be a new thing. Um, I know it was when I first went to a Pentecostal church. What's that all that about? I used to christenings me. Um, so the, we're doing a dedication, which is basically what we're doing is we're giving thanks for the new life that's come along with Joshua, who's full of life, <laughs> and little Alan, who I'm sure will catch up with life. Um, so we're doing the de- thanksgiving and dedicating their lives to God. And this is different to a de- traditional christening, in that we believe that salvation for anybody is the, their own personal choice that will be made of their own free will when they can make that choice for themselves. Today we're just giving thanks for them and bringing them to before Jesus to get dedicated to him. And that's what we're going to do today. So I've just got a scripture reading, reading from um, the book of Luke. Luke's account of Jesus' life. This is the bit about John the Baptist he's writing here. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation, verse chapter 1, verse 57 to 66. And it says, when it was time for Elizabeth's baby to be born, she gave birth to a son. And when her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had been very merciful to her, everyone rejoiced with her, which is what we're doing today. We're rejoicing. It's not on the day of the birth, obviously, but we're still rejoicing. When the baby was eight, eight days old, all they all came for the circumcision ceremony. Not that Josh, you're okay. <laughs> they wanted to name him Zachariah after his father. But Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. What? they exclaimed. There is no one in all your family by that name. So they used gestures to ask the baby's father what he wanted uh, what he wanted to name him. And he motioned for a writing tablet. To, uh, to everyone's surprise, he wrote, his name is John. Instantly, Zachariah could speak again, and he began praising God. All fell upon the whole neighborhood, and the news of what had happened th- spread through, throughout the Judean hills. Everyone who heard it reflected on these events and asked, what will this child turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was surely upon him in a special way. And we believe in today, aren't we, that the hand of the Lord is going to be upon Josh and upon Alan in a special way. And as we were praying before the service, I just want to share this with everybody in here. I was just praying and um, basically three different sets of eyes came into, into my view in, in my in, in my mind. The first set of eyes was my dad's. He was 91 last week. And his eyes, let's be fair, are looking back upon his 91 years. And um, we've seen what he's become. Um, but with Eleanor and Josh, I saw, kind of got an idea of seeing through their eyes where everything is ahead of them. Their whole life is ahead of them and it's all new. And I just wanted to encourage everybody here today to try and see through the eyes of a child this morning, whereas it's a new beginning. Today is a new beginning for the rest of your life. So let's look ahead for the rest of our lives. It's a brand new day. All things are new. And if you if you don't know Jesus this morning, you can know him and all things can be new as you move forward. Um, so let's look forward. Let's be determined in our hearts to look forward as these two little ones will be doing as well. So let's pray together. Should we stand and pray and we're going to worship? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, for this day. Sometimes it can be easy to thank you on a day where the sun, and sh- sun is shining and everything seems well. But we know that's not the case, Lord, where we, we come into your presence, Lord, and we come with all kinds of different things, all stuff that's been going on in the last week. Heavenly Father, we want to just lay all that down. We want to focus upon you this morning, Jesus. And we want to focus upon these two young lives, where we're bringing them and giving you thanks for their lives and, and dedicating them to you. And Heavenly Father, help us now to fix our eyes upon you 
as we lift your name high and we give you the worship that you deserve in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord, we just come to you this morning and we're so grateful that you know us better than we know ourselves. We thank you that you know everything about us. You've known us since before we were born. You know our thoughts, you know our hopes, you know our dreams, you know our sadnesses, you know our um, fears and our worries. And this morning we just bring them all to you and lay them at your feet. And we want to come and worship you and thank you because you alone are worthy.
take communion now so if you've got your communion um, just stay in your seats and just prepare your communion then we're going to take that together after communion I'm going to hand over to Christy and Becky and they're going to lead us in the dedication service um, side of the part of the service sorry and um, then we're going to have a song um, to finish the dedication off with at the end of it and then Christy is also our speaker this morning So we're going to come, we're going to honour Jesus again. Just honour honor him in prayer. Um, honour him in reading the scriptures. Honour him in worship. We're going to honour him now in taking communion. He says to us, do this in remembrance of him. So we're going to remember Jesus of Nazareth who came into this world for about 2,000 years ago. And he died on a cross. That part is undisputed. But we as body of Christ believed that he was the son of God. He was God in the flesh and as such was able to die for our sins when he died on that cross. So we're going to give thanks for him, his broken body. We're going to take the bread together, giving thanks for the son of God who gave himself for us. going to take um, the cup of wine which represents his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins but also shared to bring in a new covenant between God and man, a new agreement between God and man which is based on faith in Christ and what he did on the cross. It's not based on how good we are, praise the Lord, uh, it's based upon him. Um, he purchased our salvation and he because he shed his blood, we can be forgiven. God wants to forgive us if we turn to him in faith. Turn to Jesus in faith. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Christy now. of the Lord. We'll uh, go ahead and uh, dedicate the children. How, why, why is this lovely and why is this a nice moment? Why we, we tend to do this with a joyful heart is it's because the, the way I see it is it, like, it's like this. As a parent, and I have, and, you know, we have two children, we can protect our children and we can take care of them to a certain limit. We can only protect them based on our strength. I can protect my kids as far as I can. When I finish with my strength, that's when I leave them onto God's hand. If that makes sense, that's how I see it. I can protect my kids to a certain limit. After that, I trust God to carry on protect them. Because it's only so much I can do. It's only so much we as a parent can do. It's only so much you guys can do. But after that, I just have to leave them in God's hand and, 
and trust him. And that, that is beauty. Being able to know that the children will be safe. Amen. So I want to invite forward uh, Angie and Andy and the children. Uh, first time when I met these guys was at their wedding. Was it two years ago? And before I read, I have a, a verse that I want to modify a little bit. It's more like a, a declaration. I want to invite Becky, Frankie, and the godparents, Alan and Sandra. Could you come forward, please? And we will bless the children and we'll put the children in God's hand. So it, it, it's more like a testimony saying from now on, they belong to God and we put them in God's hand. So um, I'd like to read um, a verse where I will take Alan and Joshua and I'll put them in the verse. And it says here, may the Lord bless you and keep you, Alana and Josh. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, Elena and Josh. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace, <coughs> Elena and Josh. So, now I'd like to take the mic and pass it on to Becky. So we can uh, start praying for them and bless them. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are our saviour and you blessed children whenever you were, whenever children were near you, you blessed them and you welcomed them to come to you and I thank you for Alan and I thank you for Josh and I just want to agree with what Chrissy's just said that you will be gracious towards them and you will shine your light upon them and you will bless them every single day of their lives. And you will bless this family. Thank you for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this family. Father, we thank you that you have put us in families. And that is your plan. Father, this family is such a blessing to us. Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that these children will follow you all the days of their lives. Father, we pray that they would be rooted and grounded in your love. Father, we thank you for the, the love that you've put in this family. Father, and we just pray, Lord, that as a body, Lord, that we would always show them the way, Lord, that we would always be here for each other. Lord, we thank you that Eleanor and Josh, are just as much a part of this body, Lord, as the adults. They're no less, for such as these are the kingdom of God. And Father, we thank you for your continued blessing and protection upon them all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to read a scripture from the book of Acts in the New Testament. And when the Gentiles heard this, that means the gospel, when they heard the gospel, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. We're not born Christians. We have to be born again. There's been much damage done over the years by churches that sprinkle babies and call them Christians. People have had, had that put in their minds that they were, they were a Christian from a baby. But we have to be converted. We have to, to know this new life. And notice here it says, as many as were ordained to eternal life, they believed. So our responsibility is to pray for Eleanor and Josh. Amen. Uh, your responsibility is to pray for them, to show a good example in the family. And uh, we're here today to say, Lord, Ordain them to eternal life. Do something in their lives supernatural yes. that will draw them 
to yourself with the result being the new birth. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Josh, I just pray that you are enlightened, that your understanding of Jesus will grow stronger and stronger each day. In your word, Lord, you say that those that know you will do great exploits. And Father, I speak that over Josh and Eleanor, that Father, they will know you, and they will do great things in your name. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We have another song prepared for you guys. We're going to sing this beautiful song, but actually, it's the words that uh, Christy read uh, the scriptures before, um, and it's a, a prayer of blessing. So we're going to sing this blessing over your family and over all of you this morning. Mm -hmm.
being. To put the children in God's hand is the safest place to be. Yeah. Um, when I was their age, my parents were not even Christians. They were not going to church. My dad was an atheist. When, uh, when they became Christian, I was about 9, 10. About 10. When I was 10 years old, I dedicated myself to God. So, uh, like, like Alan said, uh, I agree with that. It's, it's a matter of personal choice. But when they're young, we have to put them under God's protection. And I, I find that crucial. It's something that belongs to God. And God protects these things, doesn't he? If I would be God, then they would be here with me, I will take good care of them. So that's why it's important to put them in God's hand. Amen. For today, uh, the word for today, you'll see the, the title in a second. Now, if you look at that, that was inspired by a song. I was listening to that song, Josh Wilson, yeah, you know. So that's a song by somebody called uh, Josh Wilson, Dream Small. And I was listening to that song, and I didn't really agree with it to start. I listened to the song, it's got really good lyrics, and I listened to the song to start with, and I thought, what do you mean, Dream Small? <laughs> I'm not the kind of Dream Small person. So when he said in, in the song, I mean, I'm not going to play the song, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave that. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make everybody curious so that you will go and go and listen to the song. It's called Dream Small by Josh Wilson. And, and, and that inspired me for this, this week's message. And uh, I want to just dive straight in. If you've got your Bibles with you, go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And it's, it's, it's a kind of verse that it's very well known, not necessarily by church people, everybody. Well, a lot of people know about this story, because it's a story with, with, with Jesus, when he was walking with his, with his disciples. It says, it says like this in verse 16, just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There's only one who is good. If you want to end your life, keep the commandment. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Now, you know, talking about wisdom, I would not ask that, you, you know, it's not a good thing to ask Jesus, what do I still need? Because he knows. If you ask Jesus, what do I still need? You know, what, what do I still lack? Ask somebody who doesn't know you, but somebody that knows you. Like, uh, you know, I don't ask Becky, my wife, but what's wrong with me? <laughs> you know, she'll tell me. It's it similar to this. Uh, you ask Jesus, <laughs> what do I still lack? Probably, yeah, the long list. But it comes up with this, it comes up with this. It says, Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven come then come follow me period it didn't explain anything after that it just said that look what happens to the young man when the young man heard this he went away sad because because he had great wealth now this story i've heard this story so many times so many times but what does that have to do with dream small? And what does that have to do with walking the walk? And what, when I was driving, I was thinking about this. Dream small, how, how, how is this good for us? And why, why is it important for us? And, and this verse came into my mind and he said, Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give it to, poor, to the poor, and you will have treasures, treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Now, what actually does Jesus say? Is Jesus interested in his money? No. If I would have been Jesus and had some, you know, 12 of the disciples around me, a lot of them were poor, I was wondering why did he send him away? You know, I would have probably not sent him away. He was rich. And you want to do a mission with somebody that's got loads of money? You know, you get the food, you get the transport, you get the... And Jesus said, go and sell everything? I mean, I would have not 
don't love God. Have somebody really rich next to me. But he is not interested in the money, Jesus. He says, go and sell. Basically, what I understand and, and, and agree with me or not agree with me on this one, what I believe Jesus said to him here, he said, give me your heart. That's what I believe Jesus said to him. In a different way, but he said, the, the young man was a holy within his groups. He kept all the commandments. He was a good person. He was somebody quite nice to be with, probably. Because if you keep commandments, if you, you know, love your neighbor as yourself, that means he's not mean to others. It means he's, he's nice. He can afford to be nice if you like. Uh, Jesus says to him, I want your heart. Because in his heart was the money, which was one of his heart desires. And Jesus knew his heart, so he said, I want in your heart to swap that with me. And I, I was thinking about this, and I said, this is really tough for a poor man. I mean, I know he was rich, but we can call him a poor man. It was really tough. Jesus went straight to his heart and he said, well, put me first. And then, says he went away sad. And then the, the disciples were like, and Jesus says to them, uh, he carries on and he says, um, it's hard for the rich to come in the kingdom of God. And the disciples say, well, then who can? And he says in the end, what's impossible for man, it's possible for God. So what, what is impossible for man? To change the heart. It's impossible for man to change the heart what we prioritize in our heart. It was impossible for him to change the love of money for the love of Christ, just to, just, just to replace it. And Jesus said, what's impossible for man is possible for God. So Jesus was saying to him, let me help you replace the love of money with love for me. Does that make sense? I think, I think that giving our hearts to to Jesus and this desire of, of, of Jesus to have our hearts it's first thing when when we when we think about Christianity when we think about believing in God the first thing that the Bible that Jesus requests is if you want to have eternal life if you want I need your heart he doesn't need this poor man money I know he's was he doesn't need his money. There's there's a story in the Bible uh, somewhere else where they uh, the cost there was a custom to pay uh, for the temple, you know, uh, like like an offering. And Jesus sends the disciples to catch a fish and get some money from the fish from within the inside of the fish. So they catch the fish, take the money out, and pay the temple. Now Jesus does have that kind of resource. He's not into possession, into money. He's into what's first in his heart. So, before this story happened, there's another verse, and I want to read this quickly, I'll put it on the next slide. It says, just a few verses uh, before this happened, it says, Then people brought little children to Jesus, for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Probably they were making noise, probably they were not very disciplined, they were not so, you know, quiet. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands upon them, he went on from there. So, kingdom of God belongs to people like children? What's, what is it with them? What's, what's the secret with the kids? We all know that is their heart, isn't it? When a child loves, they love. And whatever's in their heart comes up. Doesn't it? They're not very well trained in manipulating when they're two or three or four. Whatever they have in their mind, they say. Yeah, so uh, me and Becky were experiencing that season now. <laughs> we think Joy, Joy is three, she'll be four, but whatever she has in her mind, she says. <laughs> we need to be really careful what we say when she's around because she'll say it when we don't want that to be heard, you know, and we need to pay attention. Because they're children, and God loves that kind of heart. 
But as we grow, we, the adults, we become more, um, we start filtering our thoughts. And what comes out goes in the mind, and what's in the mind, and etc. Et but what's in the heart is what Jesus is at. Now, the next slide shows like a rose, and there are two hands. But what I, what I want us to imagine in that picture is that, that imagine that that rose is still in the ground. So, so the rose is still alive, if you like. It's not a chopped rose. Yeah, so that, imagine there are two hands where, where the, the stork is too weak to stay on his own, and, and God, in that place, is holding it. Right? So if you have that picture in mind, that's how I see myself. If God would not hold me in his hand like that, if he lets it go, I'll fall. Yeah. I'll fall. And I realized through years and years being trying to get closer to Jesus that if he is not there with me, in me, before me, after me, if Jesus is not there, I will fall. And I managed to to, to, to have bad times in my life, even with Jesus next to me. He was still holding me, but I'm really, really weak without him. And, and why is Jesus after, after the heart, huh? Why? Because the, it's, it's who he is. And I'm just going to quickly explain about Jesus' heart. It's something that I've, I've realized recently. The worse the heart, the more attracted, attractive is to Jesus. And I'll explain why and how that comes. Now, if you imagine Jesus going on the cross, taking all the sin, right? We believe this. We believe that Jesus went on, on the cross. He died for our sins. If I am a very, very sinful person, and next to me is a person with two or one little sin. Jesus died for both of us. I'm the very sinful, and next to me is the one with just very few sins. He paid my price, he paid that person's price. But when it comes to heart, you know that when you pay more, you treasure the thing that you paid more for? If, you, if, you, if I pay two penny for something, or I pay 2,000 pounds, I will go towards the 2,000 pound thing? Does that make sense? And Jesus' heart is attracted to people that are deeply within sin. That's what, the, that's what I understand from the Bible. People that are deep in sin, like, like Peter was, like Matthew was, his apostles. You know, he was at the border, getting, <laughs> cheating people all the time. And then these are sinners that Jesus took around him. Really, like, like proper sinners. These guys were pros when it comes to sin, his disciples. And it, he is a, such an amazing person, our God. Because he loves to clean us. He's got this desire within him. This, that, that love is like, I want to get you clean. And the worse you are, the more I want to do it. And I, I gave you an example some time back. If somebody is really passionate about street people, you know, when they rough sleepers. If there's somebody that has really passion for rough sleepers, the worse the person is, the more you want to help them. Yeah, I was I was in mission with Becky and we were in Romania helping um, gypsy kids in, in a gypsy village and there was a particular family that was so poor they were like five living in one room and when we opened that door it just went like we can't forget that scene and it was really really tough but the, the desire was to help them first they were next to them some another family same similar children but uh, they had a bit of money they had food on the table my heart was, and our heart was, to help the very needy ones. And I believe it's the same with God. I believe it's the same with Jesus' heart. That's why he wants the heart. And, and then the next one, I put that, that, that that's a rock, and somebody's trying to push that rock. And I'll, I'll go into explaining why I entitled, I put the title here, Dream Small. Just going to go, quickly go into dreaming. What is dream? What, what, why dreaming? Dream can be hope. No? When, I, when I dream about something, you hope for something, or you believe into something. You, you dream. So I'm using this word dreaming. Now, dreaming or hoping for some people can be scary. For some people, it's essential. 
like for my type of if I don't dream about something, I won't do anything. And and, and and Becky knows, she knows that I'm a proper dreamer. She's like, just step back a little bit. Because <laughs> when I have an idea, it's about a dream. Oh, let's get let's do this. So I'm as a personality, I'm a person that wants to do things further, 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 and I'm looking very hard, very far in, in, in the future. And Becky's like, no, 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 step back, step back. Now, how are you gonna get there? Because it depends on, on, on I, I, I'm, I was thinking about people that I know. If I'm talking about a dream to somebody, that person can be scared of dreaming. For different reasons, but one of the main reasons could be that as a personality, somebody can be a perfectionist. If you like to do things perfectly, you don't want to dream about something that's not in your control. If you're a person that likes to jump forward, it, it, it's wow. difficult to, to stay still and to take one step at a time. So, why I'm making dreams to heart? Because from the heart come out the dreams. Does that make sense? So, dreaming big, and why I thought about this song to be dream small, and why why for today my uh, challenge for the church is to dream small. Is that if, if we if we go for the big dream, it can feel like that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give some examples of big dreams. Huh? I want to be holy. I want to be like Jesus. Feels like that sometimes. I feel like that sometimes. I want to be like Jesus. I'm like, <laughs> I'm still pushing that big rock. Because I'm like, I'm so far from being like Jesus. So. I want to be a good person. I feel like that. Because if in my heart I can't stand somebody, I'll dream about how I'll make that person suffer. Yeah. Does that make sense? If, I, if in my heart is love, I'll dream about how I'm going to make that person feel nice. If my heart belongs to Jesus, he, changed those, he changes those desires and he says, why don't you dream about that? Why don't you dream about this? Why don't you dream about... And, and if the dream is big, there's a risk of disappointment there. You know, being like Christ, being like Jesus. Who can be like him? I mean, we were trying. I started a long time ago, and I'm not, you know, I didn't get very far yet. But I'm still working on it. But what I'm trying to say here is aim to be holy, aim to be good, can feel like we're pushing that rock. Because on a day to day basis, when we look in the mirror, we don't see. Jesus every time, do So, moving to dream small. Uh, and, and then, one last thing I want to say about that slide is, it feels not achievable. It doesn't feel achievable, does it? When you can't stand somebody, and when you struggle to love someone that makes you suffer, the, de the devil will come and will say, you can't be serious about this, how can you? You will never forget that person. But a small dream can be, I want to be able to forget the person I can't forget. And if the desire is in the heart, then Jesus will come and help us to go with that. But let's make it small. Because if it's smaller, it feels more achievable. And the devil will come and say, you can't be serious about this. It's too far, too big. You've tried. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to get fit for a race. You know? go straight for a marathon and run, you know, 25 miles on first day. Not even God expects us to, to get like that. It's not wise. But if we get smaller dreams that feel achievable, when the heart is in the right place, bear in mind that is crucial. What's important in the next slide? Uh, a small dream is not easily, when, when you have a smaller dream, that's not easily, you can't get easy, dis easily disappointed. I mean, I'll give you an example. I like, I like to read the Bible more. And I'm not happy with how much reading I do today. I'm busy, I'm, I've got my own excuses, but I'm not reading as much as I want to. So if I make a, a point for myself, I say, I want to read, read more. If I don't, it's a small thing. And I know I'll try again and I'll try again, but it's not something big, something that breaks my heart and the devil will come and say, you're not good for anything. You're not good. 
And God doesn't love you because you can't do anything. No, it's a small thing. And, and something that we need to remember, our life with Jesus, it's, it's more like a transformation, like a step-by-step -step thing. Like a war, a war is not one fight, is it? Second World War, it wasn't one fight. You win one, you lose one, you win one, you lose one, you win two, three, four, then you gain a bit of terrain. That's life. And that's how life is. But as long as Jesus is in our heart, we have a chance. And I'll explain, I'll explain you why. Because he's got things like, do you remember the, the story with the 5,000? When, uh, for who watched G, uh, anything with Jesus, when he feeds the crowd, and we're 5,000. Now, why did Jesus didn't take three carts of bread and one cart of fish and say, there are about 5,000 people here, so you've got this huge amount of food to feed me? It would make more sense. And if, and if I would be an apostle there, I would think, yeah, makes sense. I'll feed them. I'll start carrying bread to all of them. But God's way of doing things is, you've got five lots of bread and two fish, feed 5,000. That is how God works. He wants our heart to be in the right place. The disciples were a bit confused, and if I would have been one of them, I would have had to have my heart in the right place, which was, I trust you, Jesus. Five, five loaves of bread and two fishes and 5,000 people just doesn't, you know, if I try to do the maths or use any logic, it doesn't work. And he didn't. The end of the verse says they all had enough to eat. So, a small step, what they did, they took this small step, which was like, okay, I'll take this little basket and feed this crowd. Sometimes in our life it feels like that. I've got so many things that I want to fix with myself in order to be more like God, but I can't do it. And it feels like I have to feed the 5,000, but I don't have the bread and I don't have the fish. And God says, you don't need to have the quantity. You need to make the first step. And this thing about dreaming small feels more achievable. And ask for help to make the small dream become reality. It doesn't have to be a personal dream. So if I can't do something, if I can't read my Bible the way I want, I'll speak to somebody that has a similar dream, we'll get together, we'll wake up or we'll text each other and we'll try to make it work. But it's a small thing. But we get active about it. We don't think that's impossible. I tried to read the Bible before. I used, <laughs> I used, uh, you know that that um, reading the Bible into one year every day you have to read so many chapters. How many of you tried and failed? Yeah, <laughs> I try and fail every time. So I'll, what, what I'll do, I'll make sure that I do read the Bible. Maybe not. I'm not gonna finish it like I want to. But I'll make it smaller, and I'll still make sure. That I'll get there. I'll make sure that I make that little step. Little step. But it's a daily thing, and it's it's a day, one day at a time, huh? And once a small dream that we have, and when I say dream, I mean something that you feel Jesus puts in your heart to do, like speaking to a friend to come to church. For for somebody that is. An evangelist, that's not a big, that, that, that's not a, a, well, I'll put it this way. For someone that's very shy, that's a big dream. Having the courage to say to a friend to come to church. Usually for somebody that's an evangelist, that's a small dream, that's not even a dream. They just do it by default, it just happens, you just say it. Just, it's, it's, it for some people it's easier and for some people it's harder. So. If we get a target, I want to invite one person every month to church. That can feel like a small dream or like a big dream, but it's a target. And if our heart is in the right place, God will give us the strength and wisdom and it will guide our steps in order to achieve that. Because it comes from a heart that, if you remember the rose, is rooted in Him. So that the desire comes from Him anyway. Now, I put here that the sum of all these little dreams that if we manage to take them off, and if we manage to get one at a time, 
and get them to build. They will build a character. Yeah. If if I can't stand a friend, and it did happen to me, I know, you know, I had somebody that I couldn't stand. It just it was somebody in, in, in a church I was working with, and and I was in Bucharest in, in Romania, and I was working with young people, and there, there was a friend of mine, a really good friend. We were living together in the same apartment. He was a really good friend of mine, but our Styles were so different. He couldn't stand me. I couldn't stand him. It was it was like we were good friends living in the in the same apartment, but it was the style. I just I, he didn't like my style. I didn't like his style, but we were still friends. So what I did, I was like, God, please help me to make sure that I'm loving my brother. And I made a a dream, and I worked on it, and then our relationship ended up being really good. So. I'm just giving more and more examples because what what does this this does it just builds on character yeah so so God and we'll I challenge you to do this go home and ask Jesus uh, what do I still lack Jesus yeah if we go home and we ask ourselves that and we ask Jesus that what do I still lack Jesus He will say He will show us and in order if our heart desires to be like Him He will say. Well, you need love there, you need patience there, you need no, you know, don't fight anymore. But we can't do it without Him. So, that is also understandable from God's side. Because He knows. If He's the one that holds the road, He knows that if He lets it go, He's going to break it. And I know that if God doesn't hold me and He lets it go, I'll break it. I'll go back into sin. I'll go back into a miserable life. I will go back because... I've seen how unsteady I am when I'm not rooted in, in Jesus. And I don't like myself when it's not God in, in, in you know, the, the aim. And I challenge you to, to do this. Ask him, what do I still like? And then I'm sure that our God will say, well, this or that or the other can be a personal th thing. And then we just ask for his help. But this is what I believe is walking the walk, isn't it? Walking the walk. Now, the last slide is, um, I just put a few sentences there. Take one day at a time, love others like yourself. And a tiny rock can make a giant fall. It's part of that song. Now, when David hit Goliath, it wasn't, it was a big giant, but it was a tiny little rock. So, this is the God we, we serve. This is the God we love. This is the God we dedicated the children to. Let's make sure that He is on, in, in our heart. And from that heart, the desires will come up. Because He will, he, he will tell us what we need to, not necessarily fix, because He knows how we are. He did come and forgive our sins. All of them. And He knows them. He knows us. I can't go to Jesus and say, I'm trying to explain myself to him. He knows. I don't need to explain to you. That's the beauty. He knows. And he still loves me. I struggle sometimes to love myself. But he loves me. And the worse the person is, the more Jesus loves that person. That's what the Bible says. So, God bless you. Have a good week. And uh, let, let's try and see what small dreams we've got for this, this week. God bless you. Thanks, Christy. That was great. Um, just got um, just to finish off with. Got some more got some more notices. Uh, Adam just reminded us: anybody who would like to worship outside in the car park afterwards, he'll be going out there with one or two others, and you can go out there and worship to your heart's content. Um, which leads on to obviously tomorrow um, things change, regulations change, and everything. Um, so we didn't want to do too much of it today, um, but everything you'll need to know will be posted on the Facebook page, the Gateway Church Facebook page, um, either today or tomorrow or Tuesday, so you'll have plenty of notice for next week. Um, but one thing for next week is we are planning a bring your own picnic next week for after the church service, and obviously the cafe will be open, so that's part, part of it. So um, please come along, bring your own picnic, bring your own blanket and all the rest of it. and then. The final, the final notice, um, you've absolutely heard of Abbott and Castella, Little and Large, Morecambe and Wise, you've heard of all these duos, 
Well, here's one half of Phil and Dave. Ben <laughs> Dave's going to go up and give it notice. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, as you may or may not know, uh, we've not been doing Lion Club for the, the children with all the coronavirus restrictions, but um, Phil and I have been putting on um, some little videos um, on a Friday night at half past six. They've been going online um, since Easter, and um, we've been making a bit of a fool of ourselves from time to time. And, Doing some stupid challenges and bits and pieces. Um, I'd just like to sort of publicly um, give thanks to Phil and honour him really because um, yeah. it's been a lot of hard work. So Phil's been doing the doing the videoing, he's been doing the editing, and he's been sort of uploading it all, and he's done a cracking job there. It's a lot of hard yeah. work. So just sort of thanks, Phil. Um, he's done a, done a good job there. So anyone who's watched it, um, I hope you enjoyed them. And um, I don't know any children have watched them, but certainly a few of them. The adults have anyway. So uh, thanks, Phil. Yeah. Amen.